This show is brought to you by... Carlos Ghosn sues Nissan for a billion dollars, and the UAE's Islamic Bank's assets rise over 7%. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Carlos Ghosn has sued Nissan for more than $1 billion in a lawsuit filed to Lebanon's public prosecutor. The former Nissan chairman accuses the carmaker, along with two other companies and 12 individuals, of crimes including defamation, slander and libel, and fabricating material evidence. Ghosn, once a titan of the global car industry, was arrested in Japan in late 2018 and charged with financial misconduct. He escaped Japan hidden in a box aboard a private jet in December 2019, fleeing to Lebanon. The gross assets of Islamic banks operating in the UAE rose 7.3% year-on-year to $177 billion by the end of March 2023. Central bank figures reveal Islamic banks' deposits rose 6.2% to $123.5 billion. UAE-based conventional banks had total assets of $848.2 billion, that's a rise of 14.1% from the year-ago period. Conventional banks constituted about 82.7% of the UAE banking sector's total assets, while Islamic lenders held the remaining 17.3%. Oman's budget airline Salam Air has signed a letter of intent to take three Airbus A330neo aircraft on lease from Dublin-based Avalon. The first delivery of the aircraft is expected in October this year. The A330neos feature a dual-class configuration with 365 economy seats and 12 premium flatbed seats. The extended range of the A330neo will allow Salam Air to efficiently serve medium-range destinations, particularly in the Far East and Europe. Carmaker Stellantis and iPhone assembler Foxconn have created a 50-50 joint venture to design and sell semiconductors for the auto industry from 2026. The JV, called Silicon Auto, will supply Stellantis, Foxconn and other customers. Silicon Auto will provide customers with the semiconductors needed for EVs. The financial details of the deal weren't disclosed. Stellantis owns a range of car brands including Fiat and Peugeot. U.S. authorities have opened an investigation into Hyundai's 2022 Ioniq 5 electric cars. It comes following reports of a sudden loss of power while driving that was reported by 30 drivers. They said they heard a loud popping noise, saw a warning on their dashboard, and then experienced a sudden loss of power to varying degrees. Some had a partial loss and others lost power altogether. The agency says the problem comes from the car's charging units. Stocks in Hong Kong and Shanghai led Asian equity losses today as the optimism that fed last week's rally across world markets appears to be fading. China's smaller than forecast 10 basis point interest rate cut added to worries about inaction over its slow economic recovery. Stocks in Hong Kong dropped more than 1% with tech firms taking the brunt of the selling. Other Asian markets also dropped including Seoul, Singapore, Taipei, Mumbai, Bangkok, Manila and Jakarta. And those losses are reflected in today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking, which tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's wealthiest people. With our third biggest loser today, Tencent's Mahua Tang. He's down $1.2 billion with net wealth of $37.1 billion. But our biggest loser today is once again LVMH's Bernard Arnault, down $5.7 billion with net wealth of $228 billion. And our second biggest loser is Gautam Adani, down $1.2 billion with net wealth of $52.4 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. And staying with billionaires, Elon Musk says he expects his brain chip startup Neuralink to start its first human trial this year on a quadriplegic or a paraplegic patient. Musk didn't specify how many patients his company would implant or for how long. Last month, Neuralink received FDA clearance for its first in-human clinical trial. It's a critical milestone for the startup. If Neuralink can prove its device is safe in humans, it will potentially take more than a decade, though, to secure commercial use clearance. 
And the OPEC Fund for International Development has signed an agreement with the International Renewable Energy Agency to join the Energy Transition Accelerator Financing Program. It's a global initiative that seeks to mobilize funds for renewable energy investments. The OPEC Fund plans to support the platform with up to $250 million of financing until 2030 to fund renewable energy solutions in its partner countries. Officials say the collaboration helps tackle the twin challenges of climate change and energy poverty. I'm Ramia Faraj. This is The Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. This show is brought to you by...